Let's do it. This is the SEC Insider Hit. And it's presented by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Mississippi. It's good to be blue. Uh, your morning drive is driven by your next Ford F-150 at Mack Hike Ford, I-55 North in Jackson. Want to say good morning, welcome in. We have Tom Luganbill with us, National College Football Analyst with ESPN. Friend of the show, he joins us on the Farm Bureau Insurance Guest Line. This is 105.9 The Zone, ESPN. We're off and running 30 minutes into the show. I've already ruffled some feathers, so I feel real, real good about it. Um, and I want to let you know that we'll be live from the Golden Moon Casino Sportsbook and Lounge tomorrow. And, of course, just a football field down the road is Dancing Rabbit Golf Club, uh, part of the Pearl River Resort. It's a top 100 course, and we're excited to head that way today. Have a great meal at Philip M's, the Steakhouse tonight, and broadcast from there tomorrow morning. Your SEC Insider Hit is brought to you by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Mississippi. It's good to be blue. The official health care provider of the Out of Bounds Show. Tom Lugan, Bill, good morning. How you doing, bud? I'm good, man. What did you do? Who did you piss off today? Well, here's what I did. Um, I don't have anything against any of these coaches. However, um, I'm in business. And I look at it from a business perspective. And if for some, and I'm not hoping this happens, but if Zach Arnett doesn't um, find two conference wins, then there's a good possibility that uh, MSU will move off of him after the Golden Egg game Thanksgiving weekend. Well, I go to the message wow. boards because that's what I do for a living. I mean, not like for hours a day, but I see what Mississippi State and Ole Miss fans and so on are talking about, and Jeff Levy keeps popping up. And you actually know Jeff Levy, and I don't, sure. but I know this. Um, I, Jeff Levy, four or five years from now, may need to be a head coach somewhere. Um, today, he does not. And there are sitting um, G5 coaches that have been running programs that would be um, a much better um offer job offer and potentially winning at Starkville, Mississippi, which is a difficult place to win. So I laid it all out. I said, look, uh, I like guys that play uphill to come in to Mississippi state and Ole Miss, South Carolina and Arkansas to win Oklahoma faces one top 30 recruiter this year. And that's Texas. And it's almost a push, as you know, being head of recruiting for ESPN, Mississippi sure. state plays eight top 30 recruiters. So you either need to, you're, you know, what either knows, has to know how to play uphill or you will not win in Starkville and Oxford and Fayetteville and towns like that. There, that's my take, Tom Luganville. I don't, why is that considered overly hot? I, thank you. Thank you. I, it's I, tough jobs, man. It, like, it, they're, that, it, it's what you're competing against in conference, the division that you're in. Um, you know, getting to Starkville is not necessarily easy. Um, I think that it's actually a really, really cool place because the environment on game day is awesome. Um, one of the loudest, if not the loudest, when they get those cowbells going in places I've ever broadcasted a game from. Um, I just think it's a job where it takes a bit of uniqueness. It takes a little bit of a different approach. It, it's going gonna, it's gonna to require um, some quirkiness maybe when it, when it comes like – like, for example, um, and I'm not saying this is the guy that you'd go get and what you do, but, like, somebody that does something like Jamie Chadwell. Yes. Offensively did at Coastal and is doing now when I think they're undefeated at Liberty. You know, that type of thing is kind of what that school needs. I love where you just went because I call Jamie Chadwell the Kyle Shanahan of college football because of all his cool running game concepts. Oh, and, yeah. I, you know, it's just, it's freaky and weird and successful. I, that's the kind of guy, Jeff Trailer at UT San Antonio. And then I also look to identify another guy if I was the AD. And that's somebody who's been hit in the mouth, um, but wasn't, was far from bad, but has run a Power Five program and is now at a G5 program and trying to, you know, kind of rehab stint and get back and like a Tom Herman, Tom Luganville. Yeah, I get it. I mean, I, I, I totally see that. I, I, there's a lot of really good football coaches that, that are out there that could fit. If you're, if you're not, if you're not closing yourself off to saying, well, we got to have this guy who's at this level already. Right. Right. Like you have to be willing to sit there and say, Lance Leipold's one of the best football coaches in college football. I don't care what level it's at. So you know what? We're going to go get him. Right. 
just like Kansas did, right? I mean, you you have to be willing to to make those leaps and make those jumps and have some conviction. I think what happens too often nowadays, uh, Bo, is we're so involved with hiring a, or hiring a search firm, and we're, we're we're relying on people that don't have a horse in the race to go out and find you your quote unquote ideal candidate or your best option. Whereas if I'm an athletic director, don't I want to do all that background on my own because I'm responsible for it? Well, at least some, I would not allow Parker or any of the other firms to do all of the heavy lifting. I know where you're going there. And, mm-hmm. um, and, and Lance Leopold, you know, he would be, if you could go get him, um, he would be on, my short list too, along with Jeff trailer and Jamie Chadwell and Tom Herman and, and some other guy. Oh, you, you're right though. Um, there are some excellent, excellent coaches at the G five level. And even at the power five level that aren't at, uh, you know, marquee programs yet may win their way there, but look at Chris, Chris climate at Kansas state. He's another. a freak. He's, a, he's, he's an absolute, you talk about a marriage made in heaven. I mean, Kansas State is literally the North Dakota State of the Power, of the power Five. It was the perfect hire. Yes. There's no question about it. Look at some of these coaches. Look at some of these coaches in the, uh, in the Sun Belt. How about the guy at James Madison? Who, oh. by, the way, the NCAA, who the, by the way, the NCAA is royally screwing that program. What if they go undefeated and they're told that they can't play in the New Year's Six Bowl game because they're in the quote-unquote second transition year? Do you know oh, they appealed the NCAA for no. that and they denied it? I didn't. No. So the NCAA has this two-year transition period, and I get it. I understand at the core of why they have it is to make sure that you are, you know, you're financially sustainable and you're financially viable to be able to not only fund your own program but fund the other sports. And it, it's meant to make sure that you incrementally reach a couple of certain standards. The problem is, is a program like James Madison – had been preparing for this for the last eight to 10 years. They've already got the infrastructure. They're already financially sustainable. They're already resourced to be able to, to hang. Hell, they came into the FBS last year, went eight and three. And now, now they're undefeated, and they went for an appeal to the NCAA to say, hey, can we please get out of this last year because we should be able to go to a bowl. We should be able to compete for a New Year's Six Bowl game. And the NCAA told them no. So now you have all of these kids and all of these coaches who are going to who are going to be told they can't play in a bowl game. And oh, by the way, when you can't play in a bowl game, guess what? You're not eligible for bowl revenue. They're also oh. not eligible. They're also not eligible for conference bowl revenue, and they're not eligible for college football playoff revenue. Hmm. What a bunch of crap! I didn't realize that. What a game over the weekend. We had that on. We took our guys trip down to 30A and uh, went to Shunt Gullies. And they had about, uh, I know you were working. We were drinking beer and eating oysters and watching 11 <laughs> different games at the same time, which was, uh, which was awesome. Tom Luganville, National College Football Analyst with ESPN on the Farm Bureau Insurance Guest Line. All right, Lugs, let's, before I get into Jimbo and Lane versus Freeze, you just called Arkansas and Bama, and they made that a game, and they can't win a game, but they keep playing for each other and for Sam Pittman and that staff. Um, what is Dan Eno? Tell me, you as a former Power 5 quarterback, what is Dan Enos trying to do with K.J. Jefferson? It doesn't look like he has a lot around him. It, it, it's not what he's trying to do with K.J. Jefferson. It's what he's trying to work around with their offensive line. They can't block anybody. Okay. And they cannot run the ball. And if you can't run the ball at Arkansas, you're in trouble. Um, and it's really been a challenge for them. And on top of that, you're right. They play hard. The defense is actually a pretty good ball club. They're, they're pretty good on that side of the ball. But they, they, they've got essentially three issues. And going into that game on Saturday – they had a four-game stretch in which three of the four games, they had double-digit penalties, they had nine turnovers, and they gave up 20 sacks. Oh. So they Ooh. can't function on offense right now. So no matter who they play, they're likely not going to be better than the opponent, so they can't afford to make those types of mistakes. Now, three of those four losses were one-possession games. But here, here's the, the hidden element. And unfortunately, as much as everybody, including myself, loves Sam Pittman, and I think he is a really good football coach, but he has now had um, 
of when you talk one possession games, he's had 20 one possession games. They've won five. Mm. And, and, and I think we would all agree that Arkansas's fan base and their boosters in the state, they're not expecting them to routinely beat Georgia or routinely beat Alabama or routinely beat LSU. But if you're going to get in one possession games with the likes of a BYU or a Missouri or a Kentucky or somebody you know outside of the conference, you can't lose those games because those are the games that get you bowl eligible, right? You might be able to – you might lose to an Alabama every year, lose to an LSU. Maybe you lose to an Ole Miss or you lose a crossover game. But if you could win one possession games elsewhere, you're going to probably a, an eight-win team each and every year at Arkansas. And so that's really, I think, the, the issue. If, if he gets into trouble there, uh, it, it, that's going to come into play. Yeah. Yeah. I like him a lot and, and he does fit do them, he, but he, he, you got to win. I mean, you got to win some games. It's the bottom, it's the bottom line. So who do you like? Um, Mississippi state, both teams struggling, trying to find their way. We know all about the circumstances in Starkville. Do you like Arkansas? Cause they're at home this weekend. I, I, I do a little bit. I think the defense will really cause some problems for Mississippi state. And, and I think if, if, again, if, Arkansas can just get out of their own way. Um, I don't know if they're going to get Rocket Sanders back. He missed this past weekend. Um, they're struggling to run it even with him. I mean, they're... they're, they're oh, he had no players. explosiveness against Ole Miss the week before. Zero. No, no. Yeah, he's battling an injury. And so they went without him. I think they're trying to preserve him because they do have some winnable games down the stretch. But uh, I don't know. I think, I, I think they're probably the better team on the field but they can't continue, like I said, to make the mistakes that, that they're making, especially if they get in one possession games. Okay. Yeah, and and past, I'd say I'll label it as strong rumors that Will Rogers is out till the Southern Miss game. So you okay. could have Mike Wright, I think, running much more of a zone read offense and Barbe's offense sure. going against KJ, who hasn't been able to run it like he would like to, because of what you just described and the fact that Arkansas can't block anybody. So KJ's the better QB. He's got way more playing time, but Mike Wright will bring, uh, Will Will is the better quarterback out of the two, but but Wright brings a different element to the offense. How about that? Yeah, I think that's fine. And I think it's fair and it forces Arkansas to have to defend all 11 players. Right. I mean, at the end of the day, um, you're going to have to defend a running quarterback or, or one that is capable of running and being a part of the designated run game. Okay. All right, let's switch gears to uh, the Ole Miss Rebels going down to the Plains. What a place to play at night. And Auburn and Hugh Freeze, uh, the coach that they fell in love with for, for five seasons, who was a roller coaster but had a lot of success. Now, um, was I surprised that LSU won last weekend, Tom? No. But was I surprised that coming off a of bye week that Freeze's Auburn team played like that? I was. Now, here's what we realize every week. Uh, it's a one-off. Sometimes you get the team brings their C game. The next week they could play fantastic football at whatever level that is for them. So I don't expect the, the same execution and, and so on. But as Lane takes his team down there with a bye, you know, with the bye week and the best, the much better quarterback – what are you looking for and who do you like and why in Lane versus Freeze? I'm looking for whether or not Ole Miss can handle the environment. I, 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 you know, I think Kirby Smart put it so well when he you know, narrowly escaped Jordan-Hare Stadium. It is just such a nightmare to play there. It is so hard. And they can get you off schedule. They can get you out of sync. You can't hear. Um, the student section and the way it's set up on the one south end zone, if you get backed up, they can, they can really alter your mode of operation. As I said with, to you before, with Ole Miss, so much of their whole success as a football team is predicated on going fast on offense. When they can't go fast, they're not the same team. When they can go fast, they are a, a, a real problem because now that they've got a healthy Trey Harris, they've got a healthy uh, Quinshaw Judkins, they are a problem on the ground. They're a problem through the air. And when they get rolling fast, they're, they're really difficult to beat. Now, I do think it's fair to say that Ole Miss to this point has been a different team on the road than they've been at home. They're kind of like Louisville of the ACC. And so, again, that's why I bring up the crowd. I bring up the road environment. 
Uh, you know, they struggled mightily at Tulane, obviously lost on the road to Alabama, played really well at home. Um, and so now they're going to have to go on the road. For me, I don't think – I think Auburn is what they are in terms of what you've seen so far in offense is exactly what you're going to see each and every week. There is no solution. There's no magic wand right now. They're just having to work through it. I think Hugh Freeze knows that. Uh, they're incredibly limited. Um offensively in the passing game. And now they're getting to the point where they're becoming so quarterback run centric because they can't run it with the running backs. Right. That people are shutting that down too. So how do you, if, if somehow let's just say Ole Miss gets up 14, three and is able to turn it into a bit of a track meet. I don't think Auburn's capable of crawling out of that hole because they're not built that way. I do think defensively okay. Auburn's a pretty good football team. Yeah. Um, it just got so away from got, them last weekend because they had, up yeah, until that well, point. Got, that team's gotten well. away from everybody, though. Right. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Missouri, I mean, they put what they wanted on Missouri and Ole Miss and Auburn. So you, you yeah. make a good point um, there. Okay, so it sounds like you like you like Ole Miss, but you would not be surprised because of the environment if this it's game closer. goes well into the second half. Yes, Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Tom Luganville on the Out of Bounds Show, 105.9 The Zone ESPN, driven by your next Ford F-150 at Mack Hike Ford in Jackson. Luke joins us on the Farm Bureau Insurance Guest Line. Okay, let's go to A&M, Tennessee, or just A&M, really. Um, I think they're going to do it. I think $75 million is ashtray money to them uh, in this day and age. I, I think a lot of the media will make a big deal out of it. I they could get one guy or they can get 12 guys to do six or seven million a piece. And it's absolute mm -hmm. chump change. They want to win. They know their rivals coming in next year. Uh, I'm not sure Sark has totally turned the corner, but they're doing some good things. Oklahoma is yeah. coming in. It's only going to get more difficult. And they know that we're expanding by eight teams to the college football playoff. And they believe worst case, they should be 10th, 11th or 12th every third or fourth year and make it. All right. And it does not look like it's going to happen under Jimbo. Where are you with where this is going? I w I'm not going to be surprised if they make a change Thanksgiving weekend. Yeah, I would not be surprised either, um, just clearly based on, on the results. We, we can talk about if, why, and, buts, all of this and that. The bottom line is they underachieve. With their talent level and their resources and all that they have going for them, the bottom line is they do not perform to the level of their talent, period. Now, I understand Connor Wigman getting hurt hurt them. And I get that. That could be something that, that, that saves him. But they are at a point now where I totally agree with you on the financial side. If, if they want to come up with it, they'll come up with it. It's not, it's not a matter of, oh, well, can we afford this? That's, that has nothing to do with it. It's a matter of whether or not they're going to do it. And so it's frustrating. I think it's frustrating for everybody who watches them. I mean, they, they were clearly the better team and lost to, I think, a very overrated Tennessee team. Yeah. Limited, and, um, limited, limited. Wow. Limited. Yeah, limited. And so, hey, listen, it is what it is. And uh, I feel like we have the same conversation each and every year, <laughs> you know? And it's just to the, po to the point now, right, where, like, you're having the same conversation, but do you decide to change the conversation? Right, right. Okay. Tom Luganville on the Out of Bounds show. He's got uh, Central Florida and Oklahoma this weekend. Okay, Lugs, you just watched Bama uh, up close. And they kind of slept walk through the game. And, you know, Arkansas scored a little bit late and made it interesting. And Okay. But you, you got to eyeball them. So I want to go at Bama and Georgia on the way out here the last four, three or four minutes. Um, what, what is your – before I get into Brock Bowers and Georgia – What's your takeaway from watching Bama last weekend against Arkansas? Um, that they could screw around and somehow find themselves in the college football playoff. <laughs> They're, listen, do they have limitations? Yes. Do they have challenges on offense that are, have been a weekly problem? Yes. But, dude, when you, they come out of the tunnel – and you start looking at them, and you look at the other side of the field at who, who the other team is, and there's still a major difference, man. I mean, defensively, they are so good, even without Malachi Moore. They just suffocate you. 
They, how about this? Arkansas had one first down until the last, like, seven minutes of the third quarter. One. And so they get the ball back so many times for the offense that it kind of masks the, some of their offensive woes because they're getting extra possessions that most teams don't get. Um, I don't think they're good enough uh, in the offensive line. I think that's going to be a continual problem that they're going to have to work around. And I, as much as I think Jalen Milrow has improved, he has no nuance or feel for anything that's not the deep. Ball. No. And, and that could be concerning. Okay. Um, we've got a couple of minutes here. Tom Luganville with ESPN on the Out of Bounds show. Tom, Georgia has lost Brock Bowers for at least a few weeks. So yep. they got Florida, Missouri, Ole Miss, neutral sider at home, at Tennessee, and I don't mean to take a shot where you played quarterback, but they'll beat Georgia Tech with me at QB. Yeah. So what? How, how does this impact your what you think with Georgia? You still think they'll be okay? Bo, they've got too many players. What does it mean Brock Bowers out for at least maybe three to four weeks minimum? Well, I think it's significant. It it, it completely changes the way people defense them. Now you're not worried about constantly having to handle that guy. And it puts more pressure on the outside targets. And I will say this, though. um, Those those receivers, if you you go back to the Kentucky game, Ra Ra Thomas, uh, Marcus Roseme, Jack Saint, really started to emerge. And we had talked about after the Auburn game that, you know, it, it, the problem with Brock Bowers is even when he's covered, he's not covered. Right. And so you're going to have to, you know, and it would put Carson back in a position where he's going to throw it anyway. I thought coming off of the Auburn game and going into the Kentucky game, Georgia did a really good job, and Carson Beck in particular, of working through progressions to find other guys. And when he did, those guys made plays for him. So now the quarterback's got more confidence and those targets have more confidence. Well, now – you remove 19, and those guys better show up. I mean, it's, it's a different passing game now. It's a different approach. Um, does that change the fact that Georgia is more talented than everybody they're going to play on their roster to this point? No, um, because they are. But it takes one hell of a weapon off the field, man. Yeah. I mean, that guy, he's a Heisman Trophy to get guy. No question. He, he is, and that's just the bottom line. And without him, they're different. Okay, I've got uh, 30 seconds real quick. Florida, sometimes you got to have a win in your first two years to turn the deal, okay? Yeah. It just happens, and, and it may not be pretty, and it doesn't matter. I don't know if this is that win, because I know South Carolina's not good, but Rattler's a freak. Napier gets a – they're down 10. They win on Saturday night. This could be that win for them. Dude, if, if somebody walked up to you on the street, okay – I took a double take at this and said, hey, um, did you know that Florida's 5-2? and two? You'd be like, they are? What? Yeah. See, it's crazy, right? Yeah. Yeah. 5-2. And, two. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, Utah and Kentucky, those aren't terrible losses by any stretch. Tom Luganville, no. have fun with uh, Central Florida and Oklahoma. Um, super hit today, and we'll talk next week, okay? All right, bud. Thanks, Bo. See you. Tom Luganville on the Out of Bounds Show, brought to you by Blue Cross, Blue Shield of Mississippi. It's good to be blue. The official health care provider of the Out of Bounds Show, Blue Cross, Blue Shield of Mississippi. We'll be live from the Golden Moon Casino Sportsbook and Lounge tomorrow, right down the road from Dancing Rabbit Golf Club. Bet 50, play 30. Straight ahead, lane versus freeze. Saturday night on the Plains. Doesn't get any better. 